What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome to your match review for Chelsea nil, Liverpool 2 and yo, I mean, I was talking about high scoring games. We really didn't have that. It was a game that dragged for ages. I thought the first half, I, I want to try and come at this in a calm way. I know everyone's going to be angry with the Kepa mistakes and everything like that and the Christensen error and I get that too really bad individual well three bad individual errors from two players cost us the entire game today and i respect that other than that i thought it's, it's annoying because our game management up until that point was so well i thought if you look at the way we set out we played with the 4-3-3 three, three, and defensively we were good we were very solid defensively our midfield was doing well to beat the press we weren't really pressing them back with the same intensity that they were pressing us with, but we were going to understand that's going to happen with Liverpool. Their pressing game is crazy, and we saw it so much throughout the game. But the midfield was good. I thought Kante had a decent performance. Today. He was all over the damn pitch today. Kovacic, the guy, turns on a dime, and he can find the pass as soon as he makes that turn as well. He was brilliant in that first half. Jorginho as well. I, I know people are going to be annoyed at the penalty, and I get it. It looks annoying when a penalty like that goes away because it doesn't go your way because it looks so weak. But uh, with the penalty, you know that is Jorginho's technique. You know that Jorginho is going to go for that hop and he's going to try and find a corner. And half the time it does work out. So I'm not going to sit here and be angry that he went for his technique again and it didn't work out this time. It's not really his fault. I mean, you can even look at Allison and say he read the ball a lot better than most goalkeepers usually do in that situation. So I'm not going to go and give him too much stick either. It, I'm, I'm more annoyed about the individual errors because the first half defensively we were so sound and you could understand what we were trying to do we were trying to hit them on the counter attack Werner was coming in on that left side and he was causing them a lot of problems like he had a couple chances where yeah you get people rival fans are going to sit there and say oh your big signing should have put those away fair play should have put those away but he was getting in those positions and he was causing them a lot of problems and I think in that second half if, it, if we had the same second half as we had in the first maybe the game goes both ways you never know it's a much tighter game at that point but we don't know because what happened andreas christensen decided to strip sadio mane at at the 45th minute mark and he got himself sent off it was so stupid and i saw people try and blame kepper for it kepper there's a lot of blame for kepper throughout the entirety of the last season and this game as well and we, we're gonna go into that as well i'm not blaming kepper for this one that one's not his fault what is andreas christensen doing in that position as well, you jump on top of him like a guy on his girl at night and you think that's the ref ain't going to send you off for that shit. It was such poor game management. And you knew the red card was coming. You didn't even need the VAR call for it, if we're being honest. And as soon as that happened, you knew the game was going to turn on its head and the way the game was going was completely changed. We now had to put 10 men behind the ball, try and find any space to make a counter attack, but it was going to be so much harder for us without the extra body. Everyone else had to work hard and it's so jammy as well because Christensen is annoying because he had a good performance. Like he had a really good performance before that red card. And now I'm sitting there thinking, is this just you now? Are you going to be that sort of player that has great performances but then pulls off a bullshit error like that in, in the middle of nowhere and costs us the match? Is that what Christensen's going to be now? Because let's be real, it is last chance saloon with Christensen. The guy's had so many chances now well i won't say Maurizio. sorry for fair play but he had plenty of chances around in frank lampard's season and in antonio conte's season and we know what he can do before that 1-1 barcelona game with that draw with that draw and the messy goal that's messed up his confidence before then he was genuinely one of the best center backs in the league that season he was so consistent so composed and barely ever put a foot wrong we've barely ever seen that christensen since we had he had a good game before the uh, before the Liverpool game against Brighton but this one it just looked like a throwback to last season where he just kept making random errors out of nowhere and this one's just another one on top so it's jarring from him and especially with Thiago Silva coming into the team that's him probably losing his first place spot at least he's only suspended for Barnsley in the cup but it still came at the worst possible time but yeah we go into half time and it's nil nil we need to sit deep now and we try to we try to defend with the same energy as before but they get one chance and Kepa tax comes into effect. As I literally said in the preview, we always know that this can happen. And this is why I was not really that optimistic. I was a little bit confident because I do think the game could have gone either way. But you know, they just need one chance. 
and Liverpool had a couple chances in the first half, but they didn't have anything clear cut. Not until that first goal. Who was it? Was it Mane that scored the first goal as well? Yeah. Yeah, Mane with two goals. And then we'll talk about the second goal as well. I don't know who Kepa was looking at. I don't know what Kepa was bunning before the match or what he had at half time. But he came out a completely different goalkeeper. What the fuck was that? When you know Chelsea are in for a new goalkeeper. When you know your position's up for grabs. When you know all your eyes are on you. And you pull that pass off. I'm not going to sit here and try and shout and rant for the sake of it. But seriously, what the fuck were you thinking? What the fuck were you generally thinking? It's two individual mistakes that have cost the game. Even the first goal as well. I'm not going to blame Kepa so much for the first goal as I'm going to blame for the second. I'm going to say the same thing with that first goal that I said for the Brighton equaliser. Mendy saves that. A taller goalkeeper saves that. Christoph Lodeshon must be sitting there feeling so vindicated because he said he didn't back Kepa at the start either. Me, bruv, I had this long-ass Kepa agenda for ages. So I'm not even going to hear anyone in the comment section try and say that I'm trying to push some BS Kepa agenda. I tried back Kepa from day one. From day one. In 18-19, he looked like such a good goalkeeper. But he had these first two games to prove that he still had something to prove to himself before Mendy comes in. And what's he done? He did barely anything in the Brighton game. One save, and it was semi-decent at best. And then the equaliser, which he didn't get to either and then this one where he pulls a mistake like that that's the sort of mistake that you're going to see in compilations in the next 10 15 years it's embarrassing and at that point the game's done and it's annoying because there are about eight or nine players on that pitch had really good performances and they got let down by individual mistakes and in my opinion that's the most annoying part of it because we had a good game until that red card we'll talk about it more on the player ratings i'm going to jump into that in a little bit but there were good performances all around. I thought Reese James was excellent today. Before the red card, Christensen was good. Zuma as well, excellent performance. And he has to start next to Thiago Silva. Werner as well, he had a great performance as well. I know a lot of people were criticizing Lampard for taking off Havertz at halftime for Mount. Initially, I didn't understand that as well. But I kind of get it in hindsight because we're looking to try to play a more defensive mindset. And you know how crucial Mason Mount is to Chelsea press. It makes sense to keep him on the team. I'm looking in the midfield as well. If there's anyone that you would really want to take off, maybe Jorginho. But that's the only real debate I'll have. Other than that, nah. I, I, I can't understand a lot of people trying to blame Lampard for this. And I saw a lot of in the watch along as well, and I don't get it. I think it's all BS in my opinion. But yeah, I'm going to go straight into the player ratings. We'll start off with Kepa. Oh, fucking hell. I mean, he saved his first corner. Well, he caught his first corner in over a season in the Premier League and made a save after that. So, you dare me to say redemption arc. I can't even say that with a straight face. Kepa threw the game away, so I'm going to give him a two. I think, yeah, I think a two is a fair rating. He had a couple saves in between there, but he just had his Kepa moments as well. So, I'm not going to give him an outright zero, but he's very damn close to it. Reese James, I thought, was very solid on that right-hand side. I'm going to give him a 7. Christensen as well. It's hard because he had a good game until that red card. But that red card completely threw the game away from us. So, I don't know. I might give him a 4. Yeah, I might give him a 4. I'm looking at his shirt number as well. And it's kind of making me lean to that. He didn't have a bad performance before the red card. The only reason he would have a much higher perform you would have a much higher rating if he didn't have that red card because I think his second his second half would have been just as good as his first. Kurt Zuma, I'm going to give a essentially an 8, you know. Kurt Zuma was excellent today. He was everywhere, blocks for days, man, and all the jumping and the agility that we need on set pieces, it all comes from him. He had an excellent performance. Today. I'm going to give him an 8. Marcus Alonso no, I'm not going to sit here and scape, scapegoat Alonso. I don't even think, compared to the way the game went, I don't think he had a bad performance. The whole defense was solid. Yeah, uh, Marcus Alonso, I'll give a six. Jorginho did pretty well to beat the press at times. I thought he was very good in between. There was a, a nice little moment where like three, four Liverpool players kept crowded around him and he was still able to beat all of them. Penalty miss is jarring, but I'm not going to blame him too much for it. People are going to laugh at it because it's, it looks weak when he misses those sorts of penalties. But it's, it's nothing too deep. So, Jorginho, I'm going to give a 6. Kante, I'm going to give a 7, potentially an 8. Because he was excellent. Oh, bro, really, that super chat. 
Uh, yeah, Kante was excellent all over the field. And I keep saying it. People wanted to sell this guy. Like, I will never get that. That logic is so baffling to me. I'm so glad we didn't sell him. Yeah, Conte trying to do, like, Ericsson swap deals and shit. And people were, were actually serious about that. Hell no. Kante gets a 7. Excellent performance. Kovacic, I'll give him a 7 as well. I thought he was very good coming out. Beating the press as well that you just know he can do. Like, if there's one player that's going to be calm when you're playing Liverpool, it is going to be Mateo Kovacic. He loves the game like that. He can turn around and find a pass just like that. He was excellent. Seven for him. Mason Mount, I'm going to give a six. I don't think he applied himself as much as the other midfielders did. I don't think he had a bad performance either, so I'm just going to leave it as a six. Kai Havertz, we go for a five for him because he only played the first half. I don't think he had a bad performance either. Did pretty well in the passage of play, but like Lampard said in his last press conference, didn't really have any of those vintage moments that you're expecting from him. So I'll go for a five. And Timo Werner, yes, I pronounced that right. Please don't butcher me for it, for it anymore. Werner, I'm going to give uh, probably a seven as well. He was very good going forward. Unlucky not to get a goal again, but he was all over the play today going forward. It was key to our counter-attacks so well before Christensen got sent off. Good performance from him. I'll give him a seven. Moving on to subs. Uh, Tamori, brilliant performance to be fair. Pro made a good claim to stay at Chelsea and not go on loan with that. He was excellent. I'm going to give him a seven. Ross Barkley, he was around there. I'll give him a six. But like the game was done by that point. Tammy as well will get a six. The game was done by that point. But yeah, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of my player ratings down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chels.